All right. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Serious Angler podcast, episode number 208. As always, I'm your host, Bailey Eichbrett, and joined with me is the captain, Mr. Andrew Full. What's going on, dude? Oh, not a whole lot. Um, Just getting ready for this. Well, getting ready for some more it's really, I got my New York State guide exam. When we post this, I probably will have taken my guide exam already. So got that coming up here. And then hopefully I'll be New York licensed as well as my federal license with the Coast Guard. So big things coming. What's up with you, man? Not that much, dude. A little change of scenery for today's show because uh, I am out here in my garage and getting the Hobie all ready for uh, first NYKBF kayak derb this weekend on uh, probably my least favorite lake in New York State, but I'm actually a little excited because I had a really good practice. feel really confident about my plan. Uh, but today's video uh, pertaining to why I'm in the garage is we have a bunch of our setups here from the spring. Uh, what I've used from Tennessee till now. Uh, and basically, I'm too lazy to bring them all upstairs to where I usually film. Uh, and it's quite the hassle. And uh, there are some narrow hallways, and I don't want to break stuff more than I usually break stuff. So we're going to stay here in the garage. Hopefully, my audio is okay with these headphones. Uh, awesome. But yeah, dude, I am excited. First tournament of the year kicking off this Saturday. I am pretty pumped to get things rolling. Uh, yeah. Went out and... It's basically, for those who don't know Honey Oi, uh, it's a very small lake here in New York. And basically, I kind of went with an unorthodox plan, which I will unravel once the tournament's over. But I know some dudes in NYKBF listen to this, and I'm talking directly at you. Sorry if you thought you were getting my plan, but you're not. Just know I had a good practice. And I think pretty much to kind of, I guess, hint at my plan, I think this cold snap that we're going through today, it's a blizzard out here. Uh, I'm at, looking at a whiteout outside. I think it's really going to help me with what I plan to do Saturday. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm happy to see it. Just hopefully, obviously, I'm not an idiot, which, I mean, who knows? We'll see what happens Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm right and uh, we have some bigger fish coming our way because Honey Oil is that lake where it just takes – everyone's going to have a limit of two pounders. So in the kayak world, it's going to be 15 to 16 inches. I was going to say what, 60 inches will – the average it's going to set you apart if you can get a couple like 17 to 19 inch fish if you have one or two within that 17 19s and a limit of 16s you're pretty much guaranteed top three at least so yeah we'll see i caught one that was four and a half pounds 19 inches biggest fish i ever caught in honey oil in practice uh when i really started dialing some stuff in and i'm pretty the only time i've ever really been excited to fish honey oil. so we'll see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for everybody listening, I almost recommend listening to the MP3 and then converting over to YouTube because we are going to show some stuff as well. So make sure you double dip on this one because you will get to see some gear. Yeah. And cool. if you're already starting out on the YouTube, I mean, I would stay for the show and make sure you guys are watching in. Um, but yeah, if you're watching the MP3, like Andrew said, definitely recommend coming over to see our setups. But other words, we'll be talking through everything so people should get a, a good gist. But any any notes that we need to go over before we get into today's show, Andrew? I mean, I guess what I'm going to cover is my guiding setups. I just brought up a couple of rods into my uh, upstairs office here. And I'm just going to go through a couple of my guide setups that I have for people and kind of what we're using to literally catch 50 to 100 fish a day when we get out. So that's what we're going to talk about on my behalf and break down into some baits, uh, specific colors, et cetera. Might even see something called uh, Max Scent Flatworms. So, Never heard of her. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that would be the main specific point. And I'm, I'm going to talk about like rod actions and why and gear ratios on reels and why it goes there. So I'm kind of going to dive really in depth into the setups and why. And how to. Heck yeah. Well, yeah. So why don't you kick us off then here um, with basically what you wanted to talk about here um, and kind of start with your preliminary setups that you obviously just mentioned. Yeah. So the first big one um, that I have that I use, this one can do, be a dual purpose rod. This is a old gray Shimano Kumara. It's a 7.2 medium power, extra fast tip, but it has 
plenty of backbone, but it's actually more of a moderate action into an extra fast dip so it absorbs everything. This is probably my favorite drop shot rod I've ever owned. It's a Daiwa 3000 Tatula with a 10 pound braid. I don't remember which braid I have on here. It's from last year. And then I have a Gamma Touch fluorocarbon leader. Uh, in seven pound, it works great now that we've upgraded. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. That yeah. Gamma. I need to get that. I'm just too poor. <laughs> it, it, it's actually good. I, I really do like tactical, but um, for some reason, I couldn't get my hands on six pounds, so I just bought some Gamma real fast, and boy, is this stuff juicy. Heck yeah, dude. So I think piggybacking off that, I'm gonna actually going to dig through. I was going to start casting to spinning, but I guess we'll go spinning first. I like spinning. Uh, I do too, and I have, honestly, a lot of my spring fishing here uh and obviously for folks who've been tuning in consistently to the show i spent some time in tennessee and in texas but obviously caught a lot more fish in tennessee than i did texas uh but for up here in new york um i spent a lot of time with spinning around my hand so far um so really for me when i got back from texas uh, a lot of our fish we just got a few lakes a couple lakes that were iced out um, and basically spent a lot of my time on the graph using my electronics to find these fish that are in their wintering holes. Um, and the best way for me to find those fish and catch those fish, um, well, I shouldn't say find. I mainly use my electronics to find them. Once I graphed them, basically what I used, um, show this here in the camera. This headphone's getting away. This is my Abu Garcia Fantasista. It's actually a six foot, 10 inch, uh, medium light fast. Um, I have a Daiwa Pro Scion. Uh, right. Honestly, for 160 bucks for, I think it weighs like, I want to say 6.2 ounces or something. Extremely light, uh, 10 pound braid to eight pound fluorocarbon. And yes, that is a max scent flatworm on there. Um, <laughs> never heard of it before. No, no, uh, no, no. Basically that's what I use that early ice out along with the blade bait to, if they weren't eating the blade bait, basically I would just soak that flatworm in their face. And honestly, it would take 10, 15 seconds of just dead sticking it, keeping that line taut. And you just feel, dink, and then you just reel in and it gets heavy and they're there. Never. But, yeah. <laughs> never heard that. Never heard of it. But other than that, yeah. Then I would use um, a blade bait, obviously, for those more aggressive fish. Um, and I was throwing that on a seven foot, medium, heavy, moderate, fast. It's actually a winch rod, which I'm going to show in a second because I've been experiencing something weird. And obviously, it's been a year of. Uh, I'm experimenting a lot with the different rods and I'm using it for different techniques. I'm getting kind of freaky with it uh, to try to just see if I can discover something maybe I like more than that's than the norm, right? Um, and I guess what I'll do is, Andrew, I'll get right into it. You might as well now we mention it. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, man. So this is an Ava Garcia, seven foot, uh, medium, heavy, moderate, fast winch rod. Um, and it's a composite rod and it's been the rod that I've been using a lot for, for traps. Uh, for square bills when I was down in Tennessee. Um, and I have it on. It's a Dial Tatula SV with 12 pound fluorocarbon. And basically, um, what I was doing a couple weeks ago um, was I was experimenting. I was throwing football jigs and I noticed, because I like to throw that hammerhead a lot. Um, and the hammer, for those who don't know, the hammerhead from Queen is kind of like your, your bigger football jig that's kind of on steroids. Um, and obviously it has its place. And Andrew and I noticed some of the bites we were getting on that hammerhead were kind of better than just a normal football jig without that rattling jig head. Oh, yeah. But I noticed they, it was a colder morning. They weren't getting the football jig as good. So I downsized to a more finesse football jig, uh, but I wanted a lighter, a lighter football head. So the same rod, I've been kind of experimenting with a different rod, and we'll get into that in a second. But basically the, the rod I was going <laughs> to the rod I was going to throw – um, basically was too heavy for that lighter wire football jig. And I was like, I don't really have a rod designated for that lighter wire football jig. So I tried it on this winch rod just because I was lazy. And I was like, oh, this is a close enough. I know it's a composite, but we'll give it a shot. Well, I went on to catch about 20 more fish and every single fish was pinned. Like it was hard to get that hook out. Um, you can attribute it to the light wire hook, um, but the rod did its job, kept them loaded over. I felt just about every bite. I will say, though, 
like I told Andrew offline, I would have, I kind of want to experiment with trying to go to a braid, like a, like a 30, a 20 to 30 pound braid to like a 15 pound fluorocarbon so that I could get more feel out of that composite. Because for those, everyone knows that a composite rod isn't made for sensitivity. Um, but it did keep that light wire hook pinned. Um, it wasn't too heavy where it's going to bend it out. Um, and it honestly, it did the job for what I was trying to do. Uh, I, like I told Andrew, I wanted, I would love to have kind of this feel, uh, but in more of a seven, two or a seven, three, whereas that seven foot didn't feel like it had enough bend for me, or at least a, a long enough rod where I was more have you know, the shorter rods, you kind of have to more rely on your gear ratio than you do the actual length of the rod. So something kind of, I was experimenting with, um, kind of getting weird with it, but I'm going to keep playing around with this and see if I can find something. Cause I like to throw those more finesse football jigs. Um, but kind of, a, kind of a weird tangent, Andrew, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? I agree. You know, I was actually at Dick's earlier looking for something and I picked up a rod that I think would be an extremely good micro jig rod. Seven, three, I think it was like a seven thirty four Dobbin theory. It's like mm. a medium heavy, moderate, fast. That it's a horny toad spinnerbait rod. I think that would be an incredible football, like micro football jig rod, like that three eighth to a half ounce. But yeah, I mean that's cool. I mean, only thing I would do is I would keep the twelve pound braid, I mean fluoro the same, and try the mm -hmm. braid on that composite rod. Mm -hmm. Only thing that you might see is you might hook more fish in the lip because that braid is going to pull it a little quicker. Right, but super sticky hook should be fine. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's one thing I didn't note too is that straight twelve pound fluorocarbon. Um, but I wanted to, I kind of mentioned more of a fifteen to connect to that braid because I feel like I don't know for me I get kind of get nervous with that light of line throwing at least a, a blunt bait right where you're going to be hitting those fish a little bit harder and having a, a twelve pound connected to like a twenty thirty pound braid where a fifteen I'm a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but again, it's just kind of experimenting, but. In the terms of experimenting, the rig, the rod I was talking about um, for my football jigs. So you can see here, got the hammerhead, got the hammerhead tied on right there with a little rage menace. Um, this is a seven six heavy fast uh, Abu Garcia Fantasista. Got a Corrado K with twenty pound fluorocarbon. Um, dude, I did. I told everyone. I said it in my rod setup video for the year. Um, that I really wanted to play around with different football jig rods to see what I liked. Um, and I like a 7.3 to a 7.4, like a medium heavy fast. But, dude, when I picked up the 7.6 heavy fast, I know it's a little bit longer, but the heavy fast was more of like a, a heavier medium, like an in-between of a medium heavy and a heavy fast, where it, I don't know, the power, it, when I... And you got to see me do it too when we went out. Like when you hit a fish, the way that loaded up just felt like a dream. Yeah. And I think if we just knocked two inches off of it, that would be my dream football jig rod. Because it, it just, I don't know, that something to talk about the feel of it, but that 7 6 did help launch that football jig a little bit longer. And, you know, if, if a, we've had fish, we both did that hit that jig as soon as it hit bottom. Yeah. It's that 7 6 was kind of nice to keep uh, more fish pinned at a, at a longer distance. So, Kind of little trade-offs here, but we're just kind of messing around with stuff because there's there's so many different setups out there that people are like you have to use this, you have to use that. Like it's a rule. It's like a it's either black or white. And I think there's a lot of give and play. That there's you can a lot make of a lot of these setups. Hundred yeah. percent. So like I have a, what I was using when we fished last week as my football jig reel. I actually have it right now with a little swimmer because of the way we were dragging on Lake Erie with the wind. Mm -hmm. Um, I was using a Corrado 71 MGL XG, which is a bad little dude. Um, yeah, Andrew would not shut up about this reel all day long. You can cast it a mile and never touch the spool with your thumb. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we have a clip of Andrew casting and just looking at the camera and didn't even touch it and just went, Doop, done. And he goes, I didn't even touch it. <laughs> and I clicked it over and kept going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am, I am so impressed with these MGL reels that I picked up. That I'm gonna buy more. 
Um, I was a huge Daiwa Tatula fan, and these, I mean, those Tatulas are great reels. These blow them out of the water for roughly the same price point. So, um, I think those Daiwas take a little bit more maintenance than the Shimano's do. I agree. I just, but the MGL, they use metal gears in them, and they're just, they're incredible. They're super smooth, yeah. super far, easy to adjust and break in for like that uh, eighth ounce. So I, I can, they're very versatile. I could throw a Fritz side, which is a pretty light flat side, all the way to a half ounce football jig with a big multi trailer on it and still not backlash. And all I had to do was adjust the setting from one to two. Yeah. Never, never heard of it. No, I know. But, um, Literally, I can throw anything I want on that MGL. But my my football jig setup that I when I fished with Bailey last week was this reel, the um, the seventy left handed eight to one uh, Corrado MGL on a seven five five Douglas X Matrix. Which out of all of their rods, that is my favorite rod that I have ever used. Unfortunately, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, 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 dude, I like that eight to I like that selection of an eight one to one just because you're letting more play of that fish, you know, rely on your rod. Yeah. Uh, and personally, I like that. I know there's some people that don't. Like, I, I know there's some people that say they like a slower uh, gear ratio because they feel like it's easier for them to speed up versus slow down. Where I have a different way of thinking about it, where it's a lot easier for me to slow down. And then worst case scenario, if I have a fish run at me, I can catch up with it a lot better. Where I've told you last year, I played around with throwing small swim baits on like a six three to one, so I could creep it easier. Then you eat, have one eat it coming to you. And I couldn't tell you how many fish I lost because yeah. they were running to me and I couldn't catch up. Now, sure, I probably could have adjusted and gone to a longer rod, but if I like that action, I like the way that rod loads up for that short, like a seven two or seven three. Why not just bump up the gear ratio? Right. So it's in no retrospect too from a six three to one to a 7-1 reel, your line inches per handle turn from a 6-3 to a 7-1 is only three inches per per turn of the handle. So on a 6-1 with the MGL reel, it's 25 inches per reel turn. Mm -hmm. When you go to a 7-1, it's 28. And then when you go to an 8-1, to one, it goes to 31 or 32. So the reason why I like the 8-1 with the football jig is like Bailey said, when you make that really long cast and it hits the bottom and you close that bail, a lot of times you just don't feel your bait anymore because they've already sucked it in. And you, they'll be swimming at you, swimming off to the side, kind of off into you at a 45. You can crank down on them real quick and hit them. And as you're hook setting, you're still reeling and you get perfect hook penetration. I really like eight ones for a lot of applications when I'm casting far distances or flipping short. Um, dock fishing, stuff like that, jerk baits. But, right. uh, that'll take us into the next thing, I guess, right? Is uh, blade baits. I like the same exact reel, 12 pound fluoro, but I throw it on a Douglas X Matrix 724, which I have right here. Right now, I just have it on a 6 3 to 1 MGL, which worked fine, but I did miss a couple fish because I couldn't reel into them quick enough. So, the eight to one is more important when you're ripping that blade bait. You want a softer parabolic rod. The only way I fish blade baits, I don't cast them. I drop them and I vertically jig them. You want the rod to start bending. You can see how it flexes. And that's very important when you're ripping them straight up underneath the boat because you need some give for the, the treble hooks here with the Binksky, the best blade bait on the market. That's a shameless plug, but that's the only blade bait you need. Sorry, I'm trying to move this here so I don't have to hold my phone. I'm trying You're to fine. make a little setup here so I can show these rods a little bit better. Um, but yeah, the, I'm kind of the same way, and I kind of honestly followed Andrew's footsteps in terms of blade baits because I came from throwing a spinning rod where you know you have your braid to fluoro or what have you, and um, I honestly lost some fish doing that. Let's see if I can get this set up here. Let me move back a little bit. Hopefully, I don't drop my phone and break it. Um, but I lost some fish with that spinning rod. So I think moving over to – let me see if I can get it back out here. Um, what I used so far this year is that winch rod again. 
that seven foot medium heavy moderate fast where that moderate helped load that rod a little bit better um that's what i use as well and that higher gear ratio is so much nicer like a seven four to an eight to one to one uh, just for the pure fact of especially when you're talking great lake smallies or deep smallies in the winter and like in that early spring anyways a good amount of our smallies their first action is to just shoot straight up so you got to catch up to them cool. i've had it happen where like i was fishing with jeff last year and we were throwing blade baits and uh i had that higher gear ratio but what i noticed is when i'd rip on some you fit you hook set the hook into them and you think you lose them because it, or your rod like you feel like you lost them but you just reel back in and you realize they're coming up to you and you're just catching up so this is one of those deals but yeah so one of the most important things that I can talk about with the blade bait is when you're ripping it and you feel them. So when you go to lift and you feel them, don't hit them as hard as you can. You almost want to, when you start, when you come up and you feel almost kind of double set it, you reel down till the rod really loads up. And then you, it's almost like a sweep set. So you have to keep reeling as you sweep into them and you're going to pin them. They're not going to come off. So, and you're also using really thin wire hooks. So a lot of times if you really bang on them, it's going to straighten those hooks and you're going to lose them. So that sweep reel set is extremely important with that treble hook bait. Right. Yeah. And I, I kind of did notice, like, I like the bait caster for dropping on them because you can still have your thumb on that line and you can feel. Yeah. And I couldn't tell you how many fish I had or Jeff and I had that it got close to the bottom. We feel our spool start speeding up. It's because it hit it on the way down uh, when they're just in that feeding frenzy mode. And that kind of helps um kind of helps you feel for that so absolutely yeah but really fast going back to the jig i do have a separate rod that i like for my flipping jigs um and so here we have half ounce queen tackle flipping jig right there that juicy little looking thing um and i have what well, here is a seven three uh seven foot three powell and it's a magnum medium heavy fast um, and i have it paired up with a lose pro g probably one of the only lose reels that I actually like that can actually do well in the cold. Um, every other lose reel that I had in the cold up here has pretty much shot, you know, shot the bed on me. Um, but I have lose pro G 17 pound fluorocarbon. Um, and that magnum medium heavy is basically just a broomstick for your beefier jigs that have bigger hooks. Um, and the reason I don't use a 20 to a 25 is because we don't have as many big fish up here as they do in the south where you have a chance at a seven plus so for me i find that i like to go down to that lighter line i don't have to worry about as many big fish but i know what that lighter line i i'm a believer in throwing lighter line like a fluorocarbon to get more bites i like the idea of trying to get more bites so therefore weed through more fish whereas some people like to throw a uh, straight braid because obviously those fish aren't going to get off if you're throwing straight braid um, but it's just something for me in my head mentally, it's, I don't feel like I can get as many bites if I'm throwing straight braid. Um, and obviously if I was throwing straight braid, I wouldn't be using a magnum medium heavy. I'd be going to a lighter rod to give to that. Cause it's almost, it's almost like we kind of, I had a conversation with the guy about this the other day is your rod setups with your line that you're putting on there, especially with, you know, the hook that you, you have on the bait that you're using. It's almost like a math equation where something ha they all have to equal and you might have, you know, some, something might be overpowering one other part of the equation, but either way they have to equal at the end. Um, and if you can kind of look at it that way, you can kind of start dialing your setups and you can kind of get really freaky with it and kind of customize it and tailor it to the way that feels more comfortable to you. Cause you don't have to be like, you know, if Jason Christie tells you what you have to use for a spinner bait and you go use it and you don't like it, but you might find that a different length rod or something works better for you for the, cause you might be fishing it completely different. Right. It, it's one of those things where people tell you, you have to use this, have to use that, but just remember that you, you can tailor it to the way you want as long as you keep that equation balanced. Correct. Yeah. But so where I am with like a jerk bait, right? So we'll take for instance, this is a, a Douglas 703. It's a medium. It's basically like a medium light fast. It's a 703 medi moderate fast, so they, they call it a medium blank, but it's a medium light rod that's more fast action. The biggest thing I like on a jerkbait rod is a short rear handle because when I'm twitching it, it's not hitting my elbow or my bicep and tricep area, and it's just my wrist. I can So I'll kind of scoot back here when you jerk. 
it kind of just scoots up with your wrist. Mm -hmm. And instead of using your full arm, you can just work it with your wrist. You get far less fatigue. It's just all around better. Same setup on jerk baits, 12 pound test, left hand reel, eight to one. Just yeah. beat them down. <laughs> I'm pretty much the same way. This is, I know I, I'll, we'll tag our setup videos in this as well, but um, a lot of, a majority of my rods right now are Abu Garcia's and that's for the pure fact that I think that they make the best bang for your buck rod right now. So that's kind of where I went in the lines, the lines of that, but this is an Abu Garcia Veritas PLX, their new series of Veritas. It's a seven foot medium fast um, because like Andrew, it has a shorter butt here, but also because it's an advantage, but the way I like to throw jerk baits, I don't like to snap them hard. Like a lot of guys do um maybe call it laziness but for me and what i found effective is i can just take i can have something more of a and this medium fast is quite honestly more of a medium heavy fast maybe a maybe a moderate fast but i like to just knock the slack in the line and basically what i did is a lot of just kind of experimentation with some rods and i'll take it and i'll cast that jerk bait maybe five or ten feet and i would see what kind of how much of a snap that I needed to get that bait to really flick side to the side. And obviously it's dependent on the jerk bait you're using. Um, but just a light knock of that slack, kind of how we talked about in the episode of Nick Kudvis and Kobe Pellerito, that jerk bait special. All I needed to do was just knock that slack with that tip. And as long as that tip doesn't like shake on you at the end, you just knock that slack and that bit that bait will actually, you know, twitch side to side very well for you. And I want to talk about this quick for a second, kind of off topic of the, the rod setup. But I ordered a while ago these Six Sense Provokes. And dude, I used it the other day, just kind of on some fish here. Just Is that for fun? Uh, that Six Sense that? Provoke. Dude, that thing walks so well. Uh, and I had every fish T bone the crap out of it. Um, for the way I like to throw jerk baits, it was probably the, it's probably the lazy man's jerk bait. I know so at least for me, granted, I'm not a very good jerk bait fisherman, but I still like to throw it a lot. It's an, oh, I usually always have one tied on, uh, a 110. I have to kind of get a little bit more dialed in with my cadence, but dude, the, this thing is the easiest thing to walk that I've noticed. And I might hurt a lot of feelings and people call me idiots, but that's fine. Uh, but I started using it and I kind of really like the action on it. Just kind of that ease of walking. Mm -hmm. um, and also, whoop, see, told you it was going to happen. Man down. Man, Man down. down. <laughs> told you it was going to happen. Um, Bloopers. Bloopers. But dude, and I think, I haven't even looked into it yet, but I think those are mustads that are on there. Those treble hooks. Yeah, those look like triple grips. Yeah. I got to say, I know I'm an owner fan. I was a fan of the Mustads. Maybe it's because the fish were stupid, but with how it just it it was just one of those days where it was just so easy to use. They were t boning it. They were getting three hooks every single time. I might sound like an idiot, and that's fine. But I'm gonna try and play around more with that six sense provoke because it, it it looked sexy in the water. Yeah, they real sexy. I mean, I'm not a I'm not the biggest jerk bait fisherman by any means. Firstly, all I own are Lucky Craft Pointer one hundreds and some Stazies in ninety size, and then Mega Bass Vision one ten mm -hmm. plus one, one ten Junior plus ones, one ten plus twos. I probably have about thirty of them at this. Point. <laughs> Andrew is now a collector. Yes. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I did sell off all my collection baits because I got a good deal on them. So now I just have one of each. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, I think let's go into the topic. You talked about blade baits. We'll talk about bladed jigs, chatter baits now. I love. Um, and here I have my queen tackle. Uh, this is a flipping jig that I actually put on one of the switch blades on. Um, and this here is the rod that we've talked about before. Um, and I have, since we actually went out last week, I went out another day and I started using it even more. And I basically only went out with the idea of, I want to catch them only on the chatterbait because I really want to get a feel for this rod. 
Um, this is a Daiwa DX Type H 7.3 Heavy. Um, and I have it paired up with a Luz BB1 Pro 17-pound uh, fluorocarbon, um, I believe to 7 1 to 1 gear ratio. It's, I believe it's a 7 to 1. It is because it was 7 1 when I played with it. Right. I don't know it why it's not. Oh, right. it is. It's below here. Yeah, it's a 7 1 to 1. I don't know. I thought it was a 7 2 or 7 3, but either way. Uh, do you, what I've noticed with it, if it's a violent bite, you're going to feel it on your rod. But what I told you, too, is I don't feel a lot of the bites. Basically, your rod just starts loading up. You stop feeling the vibration. But like you mentioned, and I, I don't like that I can't feel any of the bites, but I think the trade-off here, and the trade-off is what I noticed, every fish had it down its gullet. And it was very hard to get that bait, that bait out of its throat. Yeah. It's kind of actually is nerve wracking to me because a couple of them started bleeding after it. Um, but I mean, those fish were not going anywhere. You're basically just cinching down and reeling. You could hit some of them, but like, dude, I even purposely didn't hit any of them. I purposely just kept it where I think I had a bite and just reeled really hard. Yeah. It didn't matter. It didn't have a difference. If I reeled or if I hit them, the bait was still down here. And I bet you the top. that you didn't hit had it further down their throat. It I didn't compare, but there very could have very well could have been. It. So don't hit them and see how deep it gets and hit them. And I bet you it'll be like right in the middle of their mouth. Hmm. Because when you hit them, it's going to force that bait forward and up and in. So you're actually going to deep hook them even deeper, but farther towards the lips. Hmm. Okay. I'll play around with it. What's uh? But yeah, so far you talked me into getting a glass. I got a glass. So far, so good. And uh, we're going to keep playing around with it. I'm not 100% satisfied. I guess with it, and I loved it. I hit that fish so damn hard. You did. <laughs> the one time you picked it up, you cracked a four and a half, and you were laughing like you are now. I was like, oh, I love this rod. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'll take it off of you. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. one thing I think you could do to make that combination just slightly better is to get a little bit smaller profile reel or a reel that has a different spool in it because that's a deep cranking reel. I think if you went with something that was just a little hair lighter, you're going to get better casting distance and a little bit more accurate. That reel needs a lot of startup that you have on there, so it's geared towards those big like 5, 6, 10 XD type baits or I forgot what the 6 cents one is, like a 300 crush the cloud. The cloud, yeah. Like anything that's big like that. That's where that big cranking reel is going to come in handy. I think uh, you just picked up an SLX recently, right? I did, yeah. Ear ratio. Uh, that is a 7 2 1. I would try that just to see if it casts any better. Okay. I was also thinking about pairing up a DC with it. That might help too. Like a 1 to 50. We'll see play around with it a little bit more but talk about your chatterbait setup too uh my chatterbait setup momentarily i haven't found one a chatterbait <laughs> rod that i absolutely love so i've been playing around with two rods that <laughs> you I mean this one <laughs> yeah, i love that one I, I would take it but they're sold out till august on tackle warehouse <laughs> so um Right now, I'm using two different ones. One softer, one's a little stouter. It's a Douglas 765F. has a full foam handle. Uh, I like a 6.3 to 1 reel because I can slow down more with it. And then the other rod I've been experimenting with is my blade bait rod. For I don't know what reason why. It's a DXC 724F, but it has more of a parabolic bend. I did catch one fish on it, and I really like how it loaded up. I think I'm going to try to use this one a little bit more. It's a little bit softer of a rod. The max line capacity on it is 15. That's usually right where I throw my chatterbaits is 15 in New York. Um, it can hold a three-quarter ounce rod. I'm going to play around with this a little bit more with a 6-3 to 1 reel, 14 or 15 pound test, and see how it goes here in the coming weeks. Whenever I get largemouth fishing again, because the smallmouth fishing is just insane right now. <laughs> I think that'll be, I think that rod should work for like a 3A sounds, but I think when you get into 
the halves and three quarters is when you're really going to have to change up that setup, yeah. which is something that I'm curious with how the seven, three heavy is this glass is because in the summer, I love throwing three quarters to ounces. So we're going to see what that does. I think it's going to be way better. I think that three eighth ounce because of the trailer you use on it. Mm -hmm. It's a little under that rod's a little overpowered for that light of a chattery. Like if you were to put like, a Zacco on it or a big paddle tail swim bait and said like the Kamikaze craw, it may cast even better because you're going to add that extra weight to it. Or even like a Kai Tech, let's call it a 4.3 fat swing impact if you cut off the tail and put that on there because it's a heavier salted bait that will probably cast it a lot better. Right. Makes sense. Well, let's see. Moving on here. Uh, a rod that I use a crap ton in Tennessee. Um, been using it a little bit up here as well. They've been eating it, and it's no secret. But my little cranking rod, my shallow cranking rod, we got a little bait that no one's ever heard of. It's called a Fritz Tide. No one's ever heard of it. Crash. Throw it away. <laughs> it's probably the worst, worst crank bait on the market. Uh, <laughs> um, but this is a, obviously, Abby Garcia. Uh, Veritas PLX, seven foot medium moderate. Um, and basically, I have it paired up with a Dio Tatula CT, 6-3-1, um, to CT100. Um, oh, whoo, caught myself. Man down. Man down. Caught myself. Caught myself. Um, I can't really show it in the, in, the mirror, in the view here, but, like, this thing loads up so fast. So, like, any fish that's – and it's kind of like what we talk about with that glass, right? I mean, this is a composite. This is actually the Veritas winch, PLX winch. They have different editions of the Veritas. Um, but essentially what it is, is because of that moderate, that rod loads up a little bit slower. So yeah. with those treble hooks, it gets them a second to get it and get it good. So then once you reel down, you sweep in those fish. I didn't lose a single one in Tennessee. I lost, I think, I want to say maybe two up here on them. Um, but that's more just of, I think, they didn't eat the bait because once I switched up colors, they had it choked. Yeah. Um, but that's just one thing for me. I have absolutely love shallow cranking. Um, I found a passion for cranking bluff walls down in Tennessee and basically throwing that fritz side, throwing a square bill. Um, I even threw like a DT6 on it. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and for $100 for a composite seven-foot medium cranking rod, uh, I don't think there's anything out there for that price point that's going to beat this thing, especially because you're, I freaking almost boat flipped a five pounder on this thing. So it's, <laughs> I, I, I personally love it, uh, especially just because it's so cheap. So I highly recommend that one. That again, that is seven foot medium moderate Abu Garcia Veritas PLX winch, not just the PLX, PLX winch. They have a few different ones. It's PLX. Um, that's the regular version PLX. There's a PLX Toro, which is like more of their beast version for swim baits, a rigs. And there's a uh, PLX winch, which is their composite. I want to say there's another one, like a PLX elite or something. Can't remember the specific name for it, but, um, and I also have one that's the same one. It's a winch. It's a seven, six medium heavy. That's more for like my six XDs. Um, but I haven't really got a chance to play around with that just yet. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get there. So, I mean, Fritz side, I have two rods that I've played around with and caught them both on it, and I like them equally as much. If I'm fishing tighter to the bank, I'm going with a 7'3", like that medium, light, moderate, fast action. But my favorite rod, and I'm going to talk about it again, is that 724 with the SLX MGL 7'3", the one, size 70 reel. I, I still tell you, Bailey, I can outcast you with this. I'm sure you could. I just put a blade bait hook in my finger. Especially with that uh, Tatula CT. I, yeah. It's <laughs> like uh, somebody's dying. Like a goose got shot and is still trying to breathe every time you cast that thing. That was, I was like, what is that? <laughs> it was like, it was both, and like, and it's like, oh, yep, yep, we need to uh, get that fixed. But it ain't broken, so uh, I ain't fixing it. It ain't broken. <laughs> We're balling on a budget here, boys. So, yeah. So, but yeah, I'm ordering right after we get off of here, I think three more of these SLX MGLs because they're just incredible little reels. Heck yeah. Do you want to do my review on that? So, I think I'm going to do that today. 
There we go. So we got some more gear reviews coming out for you guys. I'm going to do a review for folks on just the Veritas series, that PLX series, because it's been questions I've been getting. Um, and the last of the Veritas series is this last one, I promise. Eva Garcia Veritas PLX. Um, and this is a six foot six medium heavy moderate fast. And you're probably asking, why the hell? I can't wait. Get- that, Rod. I, it's. You're, you're probably like, why the hell did you buy a six foot six? And I'm throwing a spinner bait on it. Okay. Now, for me, when I throw a spinner bait, say if I'm on this large grass flat, right, and I'm trying to burn something over it, I'm trying to cover water. For me, it's just not in my confidence to pull out a long rod and throw a spinner bait or even throw a spinner bait in that scenario. You know, I'm throwing a small swim bait, I'm throwing a chatter bait, I'm throwing a jerk bait. There's a lot more techniques that I'm going with versus a spinner bait, and that's just kind of my confidence in how I roll. But there is a window of opportunity that I get here in New York, and actually I, I used it in that same relative scenario down in Texas and in Tennessee where it's close quarters. You are very, you're casting to very, very specific areas to try to get that bait really close and hover it right next to certain targets and structures. And that's where that 6.6 six comes in handy, where this is for a 6.6, six, it's a beefy rod. There's a lot of power behind this thing, and that moderate fast really lets me get the bait. But that 6.6, six, what it allows me to do is get kind of up close and personal, which I can do in that kayak. I can get very up close and personal to things and not oh, spook fish yeah. because it makes no noise. Um, and I want to be very, very accurate with it, and that 6.6 six, six allows me to do that. It's actually kind of pretty sick how accurate you can be with this thing. Um, but I have it paired up with just a simple uh, speed spool LFS, 15-pound uh, fluorocarbon. Um, not a reel I want to use up here when it's ice out and really cold, but the timing frame I'm talking about, it's nice and warm, and uh, you can jack on these things. It's I have laid the lumber on fish with a 6.6, six, and I have not lost a fish yet. Oh, I it's, think- actually, it's actually a lot of fun. It's a fun little rod because it actually – I'm really quick. My little lake X close by me. It's a lot of bank beating, but it's not like you can't, they're not like places where it's like open bank. You can make full cast. It's bank where you're going to be like, you're making a certain angle cast because there's trees around you. That's six, six is kind of perfect. So if you're a bank fisherman, I would try a little six, six action. Yeah. I don't have one up here with me, but my favorite size spinnerbait rod is between six, six and six, eight. You can even get away. Um, they don't really make them anymore, but I grew up spinnerbait fishing like 10 years ago. Um, you're going to laugh at me for this. My favorite spinnerbait rod was a six-foot Berkeley lightning rod pistol grip. <laughs> a lightning rod. Here's why. It was one of the only pistol grip rods you could find, but I loved throwing spinnerbaits around docks and underneath them, and that little rod, when you're five feet away from a dock, you can literally just flick your wrist and get it out 30, 40 feet that you needed to way up underneath the dock. The short handle literally like came this far down your wrist where you're holding the reel. So you don't have any leverage, but you can hit them in a reel and get those fish out of the dock because the rod was so short it made up for it. And I broke it. It was my favorite spinnerbait rod I've ever had because mm-hmm. just don't make pistol grip rods for high price points, but it was an incredible short distance dock beating rod with like a three eighth ounce spinner bait i can see i can't use a pistol grip i don't know it was wonky it was definitely wonky. I feel like you're just like you're bitch slapping the air when you try to set the hook on a pistol grip yeah i mean it, it did feel like that the rod was like <laughs> going karate things yeah exactly but <laughs> that rod was so short you didn't need a big powerful hook set you could just almost sweep them and pull and reel as fast as you can and pull them right out and it was deadly accurate. Hmm. That's sick. Yeah, I don't have one anymore. I broke it. And that's really when I stopped spinnerbait fishing was when I broke that pistol grip rod because I couldn't find a rod to do the same thing with it. Yeah, I didn't really get into throwing spinnerbaits a lot, especially up here um, until probably three or four years ago because, you know, I'd go out and everybody and their mother's throwing a spinnerbait. But now, you know, I kind of noticed like a few years back, not many guys are throwing. And I think it might have been the emergence of the chatterbait. Oh, yeah. Um, guys were started to stop throwing the spinnerbait. I'm like, no one's throwing that thing anymore. And one of the days I forced myself to get back into the swing of throwing it. And I had 26, 
26 pounds on it. And I was like, oh, okay, we're back to throwing a spinnerbait. They still eat it and nobody <laughs> they does. still eat it. And that's one of the things that was kind of cool. Total sidetrack here. Um, I was listening to an episode, and the guy's like, you got to think about it. These old baits that guys used, and they say phased out, and fish got used to them. Well, now a lot of those fish, the reason why these old baits are working again is because those fish are dead, and these are new fish that have never seen it before. Right. So he goes, you can't just phase out these baits and say they're never going to work before when they're brand new fish and they've never seen it. So it's kind of adds a little bit of perspective to things. But um, a rod that I throw on a bait for a bait that every fish has seen and every fish is too stupid and still eats it um, is a Sanko um, and recently a Ned Rig. And I use the same rod for both. Uh, and this is an Abu Garcia Fantasista Premier. Uh, it's a seven foot medium fast. Um, I got my little Ned rig on there. Um, I throw a Senko on this thing. Um, but I have probably one of your, your better, there's another reel that I'll talk in a second that rivals it, but this is a Daiwa Fuego 2,500 hundred dollar reel. And I've had zero problems with this thing it has worked just like my pro scion has for almost double the price. Um, another reel that rivals this thing is like a Shimano Nasky. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Nasky, NASA, I don't know. Either way, you'll get the gist. Um, $100 reel, best bang for your buck if you're bowling on a budget. I don't think you really need crazy Stratix. I've been beating the crap out of these things. The drag systems have been perfect. Um, but yeah, seven foot medium, uh, medium fast, um, perfect little rod. It's more of kind of like a medium heavy than anything else, but it's got a faster tip that I like for my Ned rigs um, and also just skipping wacky rigs under Overhanging trees, docks, around grass, all that jazz. So my Senko tube, actually small spin, like small swim bay, like a rage swimmer or a Kytec, uh, like a Kytec, is actually that X Matrix 744, any seven foot four spinning rod that's medium, fast, extra fast. Um, I like slinging Senkos. I don't fish Senkos on docks like a lot of people do if I did. I would probably use a 6'6 six, six or a 6'10, but I do more like Neko rigging, deep Senko fishing when I do it. A tube rod, I want something with backbone, but a soft tip. So I really like that 744. I don't have it in the house because it's in my boat, covered underneath four inches of snow that we got overnight. So I couldn't get all of my stuff out. Um, but yeah, a 744, I can cast a Senko a long way. I can cast a small swimmer a far away on a spinning rod. In a tube jig or even a Ned rig, it's a heck of a Ned rig rod. It's a good, it's a good rod. Yeah. It's like a moderate bend, but an extra fast, subtle tip to it. So you can see them bite it as you're pulling. And then when you hit them, it loads all the way through. See yeah, dude. Off. Yeah. My last rod here, uh, spinning rod, it's pretty much been my workhorse that I've had in my hands the majority of the time this spring so far. Um, I never thought I'd like another spinning rod the way I like this thing. Um, and it is Shocker, another Abu Garcia. Uh, it's a Fantasista, Fantasista Premier. It's a 7 6 uh, medium fast. I believe, let me double check here. Yes, 7 6 medium fast. Um, I wanted to say it was a medium heavy because it feels more like a medium heavy. Uh, because it is probably a rod, to be honest with you, when I fish a drop shot around grass that I might actually go to because it's longer. I'm going to play around with it. I might try to see if there's more. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Abu's lineup fully, so I don't know if they have like a 7.3 or a 7.4 that I could throw instead. Um, but kind of like how you throw a drop shot around grass a lot, this is probably one I'm going to try it with. But either way, getting back to my point, um, I have another Daiwa Flago on here, 2,500, 15-pound braid. Eight pound fluorocarbon. Um, I like to have my leader start right at the reel. That way, it's kind of like you have almost your full rod lengths uh, of a leader. I have a little quarter ounce football head with a little swim bait, and that's basically been absolutely dynamite for me. Um, the rod, just like throwing it for, especially for swim baits, because I love throwing just single swim baits this time of year. The sensitivity of this freaking thing is absolutely unbelievable. And you, you watch me go put this thing to work. And dude, the way this thing loads up, they are not coming off. No, I don't know. It's some. I obviously want to dive more into it, but I've just been obsessed with this seven six swim bait rod. Um, for small swim baits, I should say, throwing that 
two point eight to you know four inch swim baits. The juice. The absolute juice. And yeah, throwing a freaking raid swimmer. Everyone says you need to have like crazy swim baits. You don't. Not this time of year. Fish are stupid. But, yep. That'll do it for that. Heck yeah, dude. Are we missing anything else here, Andrew? I know we have. I have probably seven more rods sitting over there, but I've not used them this spring, so I didn't want to fall them or compile them into this video we are creating. Um, but are there any other baits that we might have missed? And I have the only time I've gone largemouth fishing. And let's see here. When I went with you, I've used a square bill, a fritz side, a trap, which would be that seven two four. Um, no, I think we're good. Football jig. The only rod I didn't touch was like a flipping jig or flipping setup that I like to use, and it's just a seven five five. Anything that's seven five seven six, medium heavy or heavy action, moderate fast. Well, extra fast with a moderate parabolic bend. I am a huge proponent with flipping and single hooks having a deep belly bend in the rods. They just don't come off then. Mm. So I, I usually go braid to fluoro or just straight 20-pound fluoro. It doesn't matter. I, don't, I haven't noticed really a difference. Heck yeah, dude. Well, folks, I think uh, if you have any questions on what we kind of discussed today, um, if you have questions about the setups, suggestions about the setups, what you guys use, if you want to tell us we're stupid for what we throw, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below uh, if you're watching the YouTube. If you're on the MP3, feel free to head over to the YouTube to make a comment. Uh, but also, if not, you can just reach out to us on social media to talk about it. We'd love to have a conversation. Um, and if you guys are watching on Apple Podcasts, again, we, we've been talking about it, but uh, if you're still this deep into the podcast, if you could just take a second to go down, uh, leave us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, we'd highly appreciate that. Helps us get seen and it helps us, you know, obviously get noticed more and helps our sponsors out, which therefore helps us, you know, to get the time and uh, the funds to start making the show um, and I should say start, but uh, keep advancing the show to, to higher levels and um, to be able to just keep producing a, a good show for you guys to keep you coming back. So uh, we would appreciate that. But uh, Andrew, any other notes to, to cap this thing off with? Keep tagging us in your fish pictures because we will share them. If you have any of our gear, make sure you wear it when you're on the water so we can help share it as well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, folks, we appreciate you as always tuning in. And uh, on Monday, uh, we are having Monday Night Live with John Sukup of the NPFL. Yes. Uh, we're going to dive in into that after they are on uh, what's the text Patman. link? Wright Patman. That's the name. Wright Patman. Yeah. They, uh, I don't know why I was thinking of the uh, the lake that MLF was supposed to go to for so, their uh, Red Crest. Is it Fork and Wright Patman this weekend? It is Fork. It's a Texas Texas deal this weekend. That's going to be interesting to see what the viewership is for both. I have a feeling people are going to be running it like dual screen, and we're going to see a lot of posts about that. I am we'll I'm looking forward to both. I'm going to watch them as I study tomorrow even more. So, yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, dude. Well, I'm going to get to it here. I got some rods to put away, things to rig up. I got a, my whole tackle storage on the other side of the garage. I got to start organizing for season because tournament starts Saturday. Got tournament next weekend. We're going to start getting the ball rolling here. And uh, we got some a lot of stuff in along the lines, but – uh, oh, one thing I want to mention to folks, because I think I'm allowed to mention it now, um, is I am now a public relations coordinator for Gunpowder Media. Uh, so stay tuned for a bunch of cool trips. I'm going to be able to go on and hopefully divulge a little bit of info on, obviously, not to get me in trouble for the job. Uh, but I'm pretty excited for that. So folks, if you're still listening, there might be some weeks where Andrew and I might have to post out um, three pre-recorded episodes versus a Monday Night Live, a live show, and two pre-recorded episodes. Or we might do weeks where it's just two pre-recorded episodes and we'll try to get out some more fishing videos. Um, just want to give you guys the fair warning. Um, but as always, folks, we appreciate you tuning in and we will see you guys on Monday Night Live.